that size matter? Yes, but not in the way you are thinking. In this video, I'm going to give you three reasons why the electrospray meniscus has to be so small. At the end, I'm going to show you why the inner diameter of the emitter is irrelevant. Okay, so what are those reasons? Reason number one, to avoid electric discharges. The electric field in the vicinity of the electrospray is very high, so high that air molecules near the tip can get ionized. When this happens, ions are accelerated and collisions with neutral molecules are so energetic that they produce more ions, which accelerate, produce more collisions and more ions. That is how a discharge is triggered. The minimum voltage required to start a discharge depends on the size of the cone. This represents the discharge onset voltage versus the cone diameter. Smaller cones require lower voltages, up to a point. For very small geometries, collisions are not as energetic because ions don't have enough room to accelerate, and so very small discharges require higher voltages. This effect is known as the passing law. The voltage required to initiate an electrospray depends on the size of the cone, like this. It also depends on the surface tension, but that is another story. For small emitter tips, the electrospray onset voltage is reached before discharges appear. If the emitter is too large, we get discharges before the spray is even formed. The electrospray can coexist with a small discharge, but what's the effect it has on the jet and the droplets? Let's see that with our soapy electrospray. Ionized air consumes a lot of energy and softens the electric field at the tip of the meniscus. When air is ionized, the meniscus becomes more rounded at the tip. This first causes the jet to be thicker and slower, with larger droplets and less ions, and it can even suppress it. So the spray has to be small to prevent discharges. Okay, what else? Reason number two, to reduce solvent evaporation. That's right. Evaporation plays an important role in electrospray ionization. We want droplets to evaporate quickly, but we don't want evaporation at the meniscus. If there is too much evaporation, the concentration of buffers and salts increases. This has three negative effects. First, the concentration of these contaminants in the droplets is higher. This means more contamination and more charge competition effects. Second, because of the high ionization of ions in the liquid, ion evaporation near the tip and the jet becomes important. These evaporated ions have a similar effect of smoothing out the electric field near the tip of the meniscus. They cause the jet to be larger with larger droplets, which reduce ionization efficiency. And third, conductivity of the liquid is no longer uniform. That's not a drawback per se, but things are complicated enough and we don't want more complexity. So, the spray has to be small to prevent evaporation in the meniscus and to improve ionization efficiency. Okay, what is the third reason? Reason number three, to reduce dead volumes and mixing. This applies when the electrospray follows a nanochromatographic column. To explain this, let's see how the liquid flows inside the meniscus. Ions floating in the liquid accumulate in the surface of the electrospray meniscus. The electric field pulls out, that is why the meniscus is conical, but it also pulls along the tangent, causing a skin current. The moving ions drag the liquid with them, which flows towards the tip, but only a fraction of the moving liquid is ejected at the jet. The rest has to flow backwards until it collides with the flow coming from the capillary. The result is a vortex of recirculating flow that leaves inside the meniscus. This vortex mixes the flow and causes the dead volume that can broaden in chromatographic peaks. So, the meniscus has to be small to reduce the dead volume. If the meniscus is small, the vortex is small or disappears, which means less mixing. That is correct. Okay, so these are the reasons why the inner diameter of the emitter has to be small, right? Not that fast. The inner diameter of the meter is irrelevant, but let me show you that with an example. Here we have two electrospray with two emitters, with the same liquid and the same magnification. They have the same inner diameter, the only difference is the geometry. On the left is a sharp singular emitter, on the right a tapered near objective emitter. Here you can see that the size of the meniscus is defined by the outer edge of each tip. I see, the relevant parameter is the size of the meniscus, not the inner diameter of the meter. The meniscus size and shape are defined by the outer edge of the meter. That is correct. A good emitter produces small and reproducible meniscus. As for the inner diameter, larger is actually better because it makes the emitter less prone to clogging. But clogging is a story for another video. We hope you like this. If so, please share, subscribe, hit the bell, all that. We we'll see you in the next. So at the end, bigger is better or what?